They're animals that you don't see in your backyard. They live in another world, right here on Earth. They're marine mammals! Bill Nye the Science Guy. Brought to you by Gooey Duck. Marine mammals love to eat them. We're animals that live on land. That's fine for us. But the biggest, toughest animals on Earth live in the ocean. Now, this water feels cold. Marine mammals, mammals that live in the sea, have found ways to keep warm, to find food, to breathe air, and even have babies, all without leaving the ocean. It's almost like they live in another world, right here on our own planet. Uh, better slow down, Bill. Bill? Bill! Marine is an old word that means sea. So marine mammals are animals that live under the waves, in the sea. Now the world is covered mostly by the ocean and completely with air. So there's plenty of air to breathe as long as marine mammals come to the surface to get it. See, they're not fish. They don't breathe air that's dissolved in the water. They breathe the air that's above it. Now, water soaks up heat much faster than air. So if you live in the water, you have to have ways to keep warm. A lot of marine mammals have what we call blubber. Blubber. They call it blubber, blubber. Blubber is like rubber, made of fat. Around their bodies. It's kind of like uh, rubber made of fat and connective fibers. In the cold sea. And it keeps you warm if it's under your skin. They're warmer than me. <laughs> also, some other marine mammals have hair. Hair. It's very thick. They come to the surface and fill the hair with bubbles of air. They fill their air with hair. I mean, uh, they fill their hair with air. <laughs> and it keeps them warm even when they dive very deep. And as you go from one place to another, all around the world, the ocean is very different. There are a lot of different ocean environments. And marine mammals have found ways to find food and keep warm in every one of them. They're a lot like us, only very, very different. Oh? <laughs> yeah. Like all mammals, whales breathe air. They take a breath at the surface through an opening in the back of their head called a blowhole. Coming soon. Gasp as if they figure out how to breathe the air. Shiver as they develop a ways to keep warm and struggle as they adapt to a different environments. Witness the dramatic saga of marine mammals in Sergio Dalfioni's newest epic, uh, Once Upon a Time in the Water. Brought to you in Blubovision. Let's go look for some marine mammals. are mammals. They've got big brains, much bigger than ours. And they're communicating. They're always talking to each other. So this is a hydrophone. Hear that? So we'll set it in the water, and we'll listen to what they have to say. It's a microphone encased in rubber. Is a 
those clicks? Wonder what they're clicking about. It's cold out here. It's summertime, but the water is so cold it makes the air cold. But these whales aren't cold because they got blubber. <laughs> Here's an experiment you can do to see how blubber works. What? Here's an experiment you can do to see how blubber works. Huh? Here's an experiment you can do to show how blubber works. Hey! First, cut one hand in vegetable shortening. Vegetable shortening? Oh, yeah. Your folks are gonna love this. Make it about this thick. Now wipe all the shortening off of this hand. Thank you. Sure. Now dip both hands into cold water. See? The shortening acts as an insulating layer. Just like blubber, it keeps your hand warm. Blubber! I'm a blubber lover. Get it, blubber? Oh, yeah. Whales, like all mammals, are warm blooded. This water is cold. That's why I wear this suit. Now, whales don't have wetsuits. Instead, they have a layer of fat called blubber. 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 Marine mammal blubber. Blubber with fat sounds like jello. Keeping one fellows under the sea. Now, when it's time for whales to give birth, to have baby whales, they swim south where the water is warm, like here in Hawaii. <laughs> See, then the baby whales can put on a layer of fat before they swim back north. And they do that by drinking whale milk. Milk! A large whale like this will drink up to 400 liters of milk every day. 400 liters a day. That'd be 40 bottles this big. I mean, that's a lot of milk. It's a lot of fat. You can put on a lot of blubber. 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 Keep warm and make the trip back north. There's a lot of mammals in a city like this. Most of the time, they just go about their business and don't ask questions. But some of them get confused. That's where I come in. My name is Luna, Luna Van Dyke. It's a Dutch name that means warm-blooded. So there I was, regulating my own body temperature and throwing back a long, cool mood juice. That's when he walked in. He said his name was Harry Flipper, and he had a problem. With a name like that, I figured he had two problems. I can't help it, Miss Van Dyke. I love mammals, dogs, cats. I love them all. Thing is, I thought all mammals had hair or fur. Then she swims into my life. They tell me she's a mammal, but I can't find any hair. I don't know what to believe anymore. You gotta help me. Easy, Harry, easy. Let me see that picture. Whoa, your lady friend is no bald-faced liar. Take a look at this. Whales are mammals, Harry. They're warm-blooded, and they feed milk to their young. And look here, right around the mouth, you can see she's got a little bit of hair. She's a mammal, Harry. Hey, Harry, one more thing about your lady friend. She's still a whale. Well, nobody's perfect. Marine mammal flippers are a lot like our hands. They've got five fingers. Yeah, give me five, very nice. And their feet are a lot like our feet. See, they got five fingers too, but the webs between the fingers are a lot bigger. Coincidence? I don't think so. Anyway, that's why most scientists think that animals like this came from animals that lived on the land. And they went back into the sea because the sea is so rich in food. And they're still there, aren't you? <laughs> hey, you're, uh, you're standing on my flipper.
Oh, she looks warm. Very warm. Her dress? Ugh. It was like blubber. I don't know who she showed up. They call it blubber, blubber, around their bodies in the cold sea. Blubber? Ugh. They're warmer than me. Marie mammal blubber, blubber with fat cells like jello. Keeping one fellows I never see. Beached whales in trouble. Next on Blubber Watch. Make food into blubber, blubber under their skin. It's a thick coat that keeps them afloat. Like all us mammals, their kids drink milk from their mothers. Like their land brothers, but in the sea. When we burn calories in our food, we get energy, but we also get a little water. So do marine mammals. Marine, uh, blah, blah, dee, dee, dee. please consider the following. Take a look at this. It's our butter burning water condenser of science. And down here we have some strings acting like wicks burning butter, which is animal fat. Now the gas that's given off by the burning butter, at least some of it, is going down this tube and it's got a cold water jacket around it, and that's cooling the gas off. And every once in a while, we get a drip of water. That's fresh water, no salt. So marine mammals absorb water right out of the animal fat they eat, the fish. <laughs> of course, uh, marine mammals... <coughs> My name is Michelle Weinstein, and I'm studying uh, northern elephant seals, which are um, the largest seals, and they're marine mammals. They're not like cats and dogs and other mammals that live on land. And they're not really like whales that spend all of their time in the water. They're at sea in the ocean a lot of the time, but every year they come back to these same areas to give birth to their young and to reproduce. The pups that we're looking at down here have all been born in the last month. Like all mammals, elephant seals have a fur coat. They're warm-blooded. Um, they give birth to live young, and uh, the females that we've seen nurse their young with milk. Most of the work I do is marking the animals so that I can tell who they are with names. and tagging the animals, putting little plastic tags in them with numbers so I can see who they are next year and the year after and so we can learn about what these animals do throughout their whole lives. After they leave here, the elephant seals go to sea and we know that they dive very, very deep and that they swim very, very far, but there's still a lot that we don't know about these mammals. Try this. Go outside on a cold day and take off your hat. You'll feel your head get cold. Your hat keeps your head warm, and so does your hair. Now, on a typical human head, you might have about 100,000 hairs. Well, a sea otter has 100,000 hairs on every square centimeter of its body. Not only that, it has two kinds of hairs. There's stiff guard hairs on top, and underneath those are down hairs that can be filled with air and keep warm even in icy cold water. You know. <laughs> ah. If you're a marine mammal, fuel can foul your fur. If the fur gets oily from an oil spill, it stops keeping them warm. When they try to clean it off, 
swallow it and get sick. Very sick. Oily fur doesn't hold air very well, and the mammals can't stay afloat. They have to swim hard just to breathe. Oil slicks make mammals sick. That rhymes. Oil spills make them ills. Oil makes them puke. Oil spills make them ill. Okay. Oil Thank you. goop makes mm. them puke. Oil. We got the picture. Some scientists think of polar bears as marine mammals. They spend a lot of time sitting around on solid ice. The rest of the time they spend swimming in the ocean. They spend so much time in the ocean that some people think of polar bears as sea bears. They're just like bears you see on land, only they live in the ocean. It could be that polar bears are evolving. They're adapting, becoming better and better at living in the sea, till eventually they'll be very much like other marine mammals. Now, polar bears eat fish mostly, but they'll also eat just about anything they can find. So I think maybe we should move off these rocks. <laughs> Use sound to find their way around underwater. Try this. Get two glasses and fill one with water. Put your ear in the empty glass and tap on it with the back edge of a knife. Now, stick your ear in the water filled glass and do the same thing. Make sure you get it in the water. You'll hear how much louder it is. That's because water carries sound a lot better than air carries sound. Marine mammals, ah! Marine mammals can use sounds they hear and sounds they make to find their way around underwater. It's easy for them because sound travels so well in water. Woo! Oh! make lots of sounds, like many marine mammals. And this whale, in particular, receives sounds through this part of its head. It's called its melon. They can change the shape of it by squeezing muscles around here. And that way they can direct the sound beam they make. And that way they can find things underwater. It's wild, isn't it? Yeah, it is wild. Yeah. I think he's kind of fooling around. eat shellfish. They go to the bottom, get the shellfish, come up to the surface, lie on their backs, crack the shell open, and eat what's inside. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Sea lions eat little fish. Mm -hmm. They swallow them whole, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, there's only one more fish. You ready, Peter? Yes. Sea lions eat little fish. They swallow them whole. <laughs> Some whales eat small things like worms or big things like giant squid. They've got sharp teeth and powerful jaws. Most marine mammals eat meat, fish, and other things that live in the sea. But these manatees eat nothing but vegetables, seagrass, and their teeth are made for grinding. Now, all marine mammals eat a lot because the water they live in is cold, and they need food energy to keep warm. Got it. 
Get up. When I look out to the sea, I see animals who breathe like me. We call them marine mammals. They are relatives I see. When they're swimming way out there, they have to come up to breathe in air. When I look out to the sea, I see animals who breathe like me. We call them marine mammals. They are our relatives at sea. our show thanks for watching if you'll excuse me i've got some hydrodynamic drag coefficients to correlate <laughs> see ya produced in association with the national science foundation it's a paradox you know why uh tuna fish have such low drag the dolphins are very much the same way extremely bam, low bam, hydrodynamic bam, drag bam, bam, bam. Uh, considering how wide they are turns out they have a little striation in their skin. That's what allows them to, uh, to move through the water so easily. We need this big motor.